Welcome to Kioware University, where we show you the ins and outs of using Kioware to its fullest potential. In this video, we will break down the steps to a fully secured and autonomous Android kiosk environment, along with how to leverage Kioware server for remote monitoring capabilities. Please note that depending on screen size and orientation, you may not see the left-hand tabs menu in your configuration tool. If this is the case for you, the full menu can be displayed by selecting the arrow button in the top left. Kioware for Android is most secure when set as the acting home app. This portion of the setup is twofold. Kioware must be the home app in both the device settings and the configuration tool itself. On Android 4.4 and up, you can change the home app directly from the device settings app. In this case, it's under Apps, Default Apps, and Home App. Finally, select Kioware from the provided list of valid home applications. Reopen the configuration tool and navigate to Settings and then Selected Home App. If this is just as above, select Kioware from the list of valid home applications. To verify, select the Home button on your device once. You will be brought to a simplified version of the default home screen. For an added layer of security, it is also recommended that you set Kioware to boot automatically upon device startup. To start, in the General tab of the Configuration tool, enable the Start on Boot feature. You will likely want to restrict users to a certain subset of content when in the kiosk environment. This can be accomplished via ACLs or Access Control Lists. To begin, let's set a Start Page URL in the General tab. Now, navigate to Security and scroll down to the Access List section. Select Browsing Access List. In most cases, ACLs will be Allow Lists. That is to say, only the content listed in Permissible, and everything else is prohibited. As such, check the Set Allow List dial. If we were to leave this unchecked, then it would be the vice versa. Only the content listed is blocked, and everything else is permissible. For example, let's say I wanted to restrict my users to just pages on www.kioware.com. In that case, I would first set my ACL to be an allow list. Then, I would select the plus under Domain Entries to add a domain. In this case, the domain entry would be www.kioware.com. This value will not include protocols or specific pages. With Set Allow List unchecked, everything containing the domain www.kioware.com will be permissible. If I want to permit just specific pages on that domain but block everything else, I can enable Set Allow List, then add those pages to the page list. Keep in mind, all match cases are contains matches by default. If preferred, a regex match can be used instead. In comparison, scripting access and error page access are functionally identical. All rules are applied via allow list and can be applied to entire domains or individual pages. Scripting access gives the user the ability to define what domains and pages are permitted to use scripting. Error page access gives the user the ability to define what domains and pages can attempt to load when an HTTP error is encountered. Finally, the protocol access list gives users the ability to define what protocols Kioware is permitted to attempt to execute. For reference, HTTP colon slash slash and HTTPS colon slash slash are permitted by default. This particular access list is simply a ledger of permitted protocols. To avoid user data being preserved between sessions, Kioware can be configured to clear cache and cookie data on a regular basis. To start, in the Browser tab, find the section labeled Browser Cache slash Data. Verify that Clear Cache at Session End and Clear Cookies at Session End are both enabled.
Sessions can be ended manually by users, but can also be ended based on inactivity. This would ensure cache and cookies are cleared regularly. To begin, navigate to the Attract slash Inactivity tab. The default inactivity timer is set to 60 seconds. As such, after 60 seconds with no user input, the session ends and all data is cleared. Sessions can also be limited to a set amount of time, such that KeyAware is constantly clearing data on a strict interval. When set to zero, this feature is disabled. The next section will cover recommended KeyAware server configurations. To begin, navigate to the Kiosk Management tab and verify that you have configured your kiosk to communicate with KeyAware Server in the Server Connection Settings menu. If the Test Server Connection button returns a success, you can continue on. It is heavily recommended that users enable server commands along with heartbeats. Server commands allow users to restart devices, restart KeyOware, download content updates, and more, all remotely from the Keo Cloud dashboard. Heartbeats are a simple ping of the Keo Cloud dashboard as an indicator that KeyOware is running and healthy. Heartbeats can include some useful information including GPS location and event logs. Both of these features will ensure you have the ability to troubleshoot remotely. Finally, it is recommended that users enable remote settings in the General tab and set them KeyOware Server. This will require a valid login to the KeyOware Server site defined in the Kiosk Management tab, but will ensure remote changes can be made to the setting package in the future. When configured correctly, it will look like this. Thank you for watching KeyOware University, where we show you the ins and outs of using KeyOware to its fullest potential.